This week's video is the second of my 28mm terrain videos where I look at some of the uh, different houses and buildings that I use for the battlefield. Now last week I looked at my Sarissa builds. Um, this week I'm going to take a look at a variety of smaller manufacturers and larger manufacturers and uh, take a bit of a look at some of the things that I've done to make them my own really and you know to, to modify them slightly for my battlefields. Now the first set that I want to look at is the one directly in front of us and there's actually four buildings. Now I will pop up a picture that shows how these actually look when they first come because they don't look like this. They're MDF kits and they obviously come completely unpainted um, but with these I've added quite a lot of extra detail uh, as you'll see when you look at the original photographs. So I'll just pick up the first one. Now the first thing I did with mine um, to change the look of them is I experimented with some of the spray stone paint um, and I picked up a tin of that at a local Audi that was really cheap and uh, it really is quite effective. The stone fit um, finish of it looks really good so it's definitely worth giving it a go if if you see that around in any of the shops I mean you don't have to pay a lot for it and it obviously covers up all the joins as well the second thing that I've done to the, all of these buildings to match them in is with the roofs because they are just plain so what I've used here is the Sarissa uh, print, uh, cardboard tiles that they produce in a variety of patterns. And I've just gone for the straight slate, um, the straight uh, slate ones here. And uh, it's just added a bit more definition to the roof, made it look a little bit more realistic. I mean, you could have painted the originals, but it just wouldn't have had that same look, I don't think. And then, obviously, I've dressed dressed these up. I've used some uh, static straw grass finishes in there. Um, the trough is just something I made from uh, Milliput. Because it doesn't have to be perfect. And then just painted that up. And some coffee stirrers for some planks leaning against it. Now the animals that you can see in there, the two cows, I got them from Serious Play. And they're worth checking out if you're looking for a lot of the farm animals and dogs and things like that. And it just, it just brings the little building to life really. Again... I've done the same effect with this one, the stone spray, the Sarissa tiles, and on this one there's a, some pigs. Now these these animals are from a different company called Pendraken, and they're definitely worth checking out. They do a whole variety of, uh, they're, they're metal cast animals. Um, they've got cows, pigs, dogs, chickens, geese you name it they've got it goats but you know they're they're very good and you, you know that they, they, they sell them in small packs so you you can build up a bit of a supply for other um other jobs the little ladder is just a strip that i cut out of a cheap fly swatter that i saw in a poundland and i just cut a little piece of the you know, the racket bit out to make the ladder. And then obviously dressed it up with a bit of uh, 
greenery as well. And that's that one. And this uh, this one again, same finish. Here I've used some. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the clay. Is it Das air drying clay? And I've made small bales of hay and then just stacked them up in the corner. And uh, again, another one of the Pentracken uh, animals, a goat this time. But the good thing about these is you can, you can use one or two or, or even have a complete layout if you've got room for it on your mat. A smaller one there. All done the same way, but when you can see him, very tiny. Again from Pendragon Rabbit. And we've got a goose or a duck there. And now I've got put, built uh, a bit of a sack that's tipped over with some green veg in it there. Just move these to one side. It just shows you what you can do really, even when you know you've got a basic MDF kit. It's the dressing it up that really brings it to life and not being afraid to actually change and chop around with the kits that you buy rather than just building as is. Um, put that onto one side. This one, I think if you take a look at eBay, you'll find it on there. I can't remember the name of the actual maker. But it comes as a, a, a basic plastic kit. And what I've done, again, I've used that spray stone effect on this and then picked out the bricks in the window. And then I've uh, made up my own second floor for it out of coffee stirrers. And then used some of the tiny bricks again that I bought off eBay to look like the rubble. But I, I, I've got a feeling the actual kit for this one, it was only something like, I think it was seven pound or something like that. It was very cheap, but with a bit of imagination, you can do a lot with these. So I definitely suggest checking it out. Right, these next two. These are from, uh, again, it's a chap on eBay. I think he calls himself Christoph Designs. Again, they come as a basic uh, MDF kit. But they're very reasonably priced. But as you'd expect, there's... there's not a great amount of detail inside. In fact, I've modified these just to give them a bit more. I mean, the shop window one that he does, I think he does a variety of these, are pretty good. Um, but I've dressed that up with a piece of plastic to give it a glass window that's not actually blown in this time. And then they don't have floors but it's very easy, like I've done here, to just build a coffee stirrer floor. I've used a little bit of uh, balsa wood inside that I can take, lift it out with. And then I've put a floor block floor print inside it for the shop, the shop floor. 
and all I've done is used another piece of balsa wood along the sides to allow me to have that second floor in the building and it that just gives it another you know another use I can have a a sniper up in the top window but as I say it's definitely worth checking out some of these different um, smaller outfits on, on online on eBay and is it Etsy I think is the other one this is another one of his that's again it's just a plain house and I've used the Sarissa tiles on this one to give it a better finish on the top and then again I've built my little coffee stirrer second floor so I can have some sniper positions troop positions upstairs I've not really gone to town on the finish on some of these I could obviously do a lot more um, but at the time I was just trying to get a few buildings together for a battle so I, I left it pretty much apart from the roof and putting the floor in it I haven't really done much on the painting front so that may be one that I'll revisit at some point um, right this one I got this I think it was last October and it was from a small company called Outlands Terrain and I think they'd only just set up and this was one of their first buildings and it's, it's a clever idea um, because what they've done is they've made it so it's you can put it in various states of destruction so there's removable parts like I could take this piece out look I'm not I'm not going to take out every piece but I'll take part of the roof out again it comes as just an em normal wood finish you have to paint it up yourself but the fact that you can change the look of it you know or even you know show the damage being done in the battle itself you know so if there's a, a mortar attack on it you can take out part of the roof as i say i'm not going to try and take every single part apart now because it just make the video too long but you just have to trust me that this roof part lifts out but let me just there we go so you can take the complete roof out on that one I think when I last looked at uh, Outlands Terrain, they were also starting work on some uh, destructible walls as well. there you can see that I've done what I said about the posters on the previous video of a photographed a small poster display and then shrunk it to size pasted it with a watered down PVA onto the side to make it look like a wartime adverts same on the other side the only other thing that I've done to this one is I found some magnetic letters and so what I've done is I've put some metal I cut some metal out of the side of a tin and put a small slither of it into the wood recessed it and then I'm using these magnetic letters to change the name of the shop you know depending on whereabouts it is whether it's French or Dutch or whatever 
but it, it's it's worth it's an it's a good idea because then you can alter the looks of your buildings as you go along and change them for the different uh, battlefields. Pull that to one side. Right, this next one again is an MDF kit, and it's fairly cheap. And I think uh, the chap that sells them on eBay is called Bank John Edward, all one word. And uh, I think he's gone on to do a lot more buildings since and different a different version of this as well. Um, obviously, I've, I've painted it up for my desired finish. And I've, again, I've added some posters suitable drinks posters from that era with these I've gone for Dutch ones because it was part of my layout with the Sun Bridge and then inside again I've gone for the uh, Printed flooring. I mean, it could again. I could have gone a bit further with this and added a few broken tables and chairs and things like that. But the building's fairly intact, so I thought, well, no, I'll leave it as it is. Again, I could have gone for, you know, some tile pieces on here. Um, I may well do that in the future, but for now. I can live with that. It's a nice, a nice finish, and it, like I say, it was reasonably priced as well. So, I'll just put that to one side. Now this one, you know, I'd got, I'd got to have one of these for the. Uh, I just wish I could pan back a little bit more. There we go. That's a bit better. Um. This is from foreground and I couldn't really I couldn't really have a battlefield for um, Market Garden without having a windmill and I think this one is brilliant that they produce and to be honest it comes ready painted so you can't argue with that I mean you could go on and do a bit more to it if you wanted to and weather it but to be honest, I've left this one pretty much as is. And it it's even comes with a magnet. So you can actually turn these. And it just literally comes off because it's magnetic. But it, I mean, it really does make a good centrepiece on a battlefield. I'm very pleased with that. And the fact that it comes, like I say, it's, it's kind of pre-painted there's very little you need to do to it you can just run with it as it is alright the next one just pop that out of the way this one is a complete self build and it's based on a little picture that I saw in one of my many war books of a Dutch tobacconist and uh, so basically what I've used is the black foam foam board and I've scrubbed the paper off to, to give an imprint of the bricks and then I highlighted it again I've gone with the posters for the time some tobacco adverts use some uh, plast plastic from some soldier packs for the door windows and for the house for the uh, window glass as well and then inside I've just mocked up a bit of a counter whether you can see that very well and uh, a bit of the printed flooring as well
as I say, this was just that black foam board. And then I've utilised the Sarissa tiles again for the roof tiles. There we go. Right. This next two, uh, they came in my Band of Brothers set from Warlord Games. Um, so they're a plastic build. And then I've just, I've just painted it up. And then what I've added to it is I've made, again, some little clay sandbags to make that a good place for the soldiers to be hiding behind. Similar thing I've done upstairs as well. I did some sandbags that I've made out of clay. And if you can see in the corner, it's very sorry, I'm very sorry about the lie, it's not easy, I know. But just inside there, you can see a, a ladder again that's made out of the the mesh from a fly swat from Poundland. And then obviously I've scattered some bricks and debris and rubble inside. And then the main base, I've used some dry tea. And then the other one that you get in the set, or you can buy it separately, it's just a very small, almost completely demolished building. But it makes for a bit of cover. Again, I've gone with a dried tea inside and then grassed it up, flocked it up on the outside. Right, again, I'll, 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 well, just before I go, actually, um, there's another thing that I got from Foreground was this little wagon. And then what I've done is I've made some of my own fruit and veg up out of clay or blue stuff to put in the baskets in the back of it. And then there's even a Pendraken chicken just there on top of the edge. I don't know whether you can make him out. There he is. And then the uh, little well, I've just made that up basically from matchsticks. And I had a base, uh, the base of the well was something I got on eBay. And then a little pot that I got with some of my tufts. I've used that as the bucket. And then some twisted wire for the thread. So you can see the coils around it. And then dressed it up with a few flowers. I mean, I use this one mainly as a bit of a scatter thing around the farm buildings that we looked at at the beginning. But what I'll do now is I'll uh, I'll put some stills up so you can take a better look at some of these buildings and have a closer look at some of the things that I've done to them. I hope you found this week's video interesting and that there are a few ideas that I've used that you could carry over into your own projects. I think one of the main purposes of, uh, you know, spending time getting the buildings to come to life is that it helps give a sense of immersion when you're playing battles and the buildings look more real, more lived in. I think the thing that's worked for me when I've been decorating my buildings is just basically letting your imagination go. And uh, although some of the uh, techniques that I've used, you know, don't come over quite so well, 
I think it's just being brave enough to give things a go. And then, you know, over time, you kind of, you develop things that you think, well, that works. Or, oh, no, I can improve on that. And that's what I've done with a lot of my buildings. And that's that's why I've, you know, referenced in this video so often that, you know, I don't consider anything completely finished. I can always go back and change it. It's all part of the learning process, and that's what makes it fun to do. If there's anything you'd like to ask about this week's video, or if you want to share any ideas of your own, why not drop a comment? I do reply to everyone I receive. If you are liking my videos, please consider giving me a thumbs up, or even subscribing so you can get my future videos. Or why not join me over at my Facebook page, which is called Bolt Action Figures and Terrain Modelling. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.